and we now get to the last, just give me a short moment, uh, to the last lecture of today. It's about marginal resection on the right body of mandible secondary to a unicyclic ameloblastoma presented by Dr. Asmil Masli from Malaysia. Okay, so um, I would like to take this opportunity to share my experience um, using physiotome in doing a marginal resection on the right body of mandible secondary to unicystic ameloblastoma. So this is the case that um, uh, I did a couple of months ago uh, relating to uh, using this physiotome instead of using the common traditional armamentarium such as um, Lindemann burr or probably by using uh, Fisher burr. All right, so uh, by the way, uh, this is my center. Uh, I'm from a UITM uh, dental faculty in Malaysia. Um, also in this group, uh, Dr. Hazme, also from this uh, faculty of dentistry. So we're basically, I'm in the uh, Center for Oral Maxillofacial Surgery. Um, we see a lot of cases uh, such as like um, pathological cases and uh, orthodontic surgery. So I see uh, an opportunity to use uh, this kind of um, uh, tools instead of using traditional tools. So uh, let me share the case vignette for this case. Uh, this is a 34-year-old uh, female lady, uh, which referred from the uh, private clinic due to painless swelling on the right side of the medieval since uh, two months before. Um, she complained that the size is increasing uh, day by day. However, uh, she did not develop any paresthesia on the right um, cheek. And she also did not have an issue with the surrounding teeth. On medical problem, um, okay, apart from that, uh, she also developed a slightly white discharge from the surrounding gingiva, uh, but uh, that was not bothering her much. So medical problem, she, de she diagnosed with the wolf Parkinson syndrome uh, over the heart and was treated back in 1998. And currently, there was no medical issue. Um, so on the um, extra oral examination, there was like a slight uh, bony swelling on the right side of the low part of the cheek. And she felt a bit of slight hardening. And uh, intraoral, there was a slightly uh, bony swelling from the region of 40 to 46 area. And while the 45 to 46 is not tailored to percussion, but the 45, was negative to EPT test. All right, so then uh, we decided that um, we will take the panoramic or OPG view for this patient. And eventually uh, it was revealed that, sorry, it was revealed that there was um, radiolucency, solid radiolucency area between root of 3.1 until 4.5 with well-defined margin. And the size is about uh, 18 millimeter times 12 millimeter. So inside the radiolucent area, you can see the uh, halo uh, of more radiolucent region, roughly about five millimeter to five millimeter, uh, with the, with, uh, which gives us a suspicious of a defect on the lingual side. Uh, meanwhile, you can see there is um, no resorption on the uh, four five and four four, and uh, distal to root four six. Also, we will find out that there is. Uh, Radiolucent C region. So, therefore, we decided that uh, the patient requires a CT scan uh, for us to uh, uh, examine more precisely on this condition. So, this is a CT scan of this patient and it revealed a through and through penetrating uh, defect on the right body of the mandible. There was a loss of a buccal and gold plate with some bulging on the buccal side and evidence of a tunneling. Uh, via cancer to bone towards the 46 region. Um, there was a lesion left, very thin layer of a safe margin of the lower body of the roughly about um, five to six millimeter. This is um, a more uh, extensive destruction in AP 
and bacolingo direction of this lesion. You can see uh, the features. Then uh, we decided to take uh, incisional biopsy for this patient. And the result came back as uh, consistent with unicystic amyloblastoma, which is a mural type. So then uh, by using a ProPlan uh, software, we try to uh, simulate the conditions. And you can see from this video, there was an expensive disruption over the uh, uh, right side of the body mandible and penetrating towards the lingual side. And there's also an extensive extension of this uh, uh, lesion towards the uh, 4.6 and 4.7 area. And from there, we made the STL 3D model printing in order to simulate the current condition of this patient and also for us to plan uh, uh, which part of the site that we are going to cut and the extension of the cutting, especially towards the posterior side. So then uh, here we decided that our osteotomy cut will be made from a 3-1 until a 4-8 region. Then, uh, in order to um, uh, lessen the bending time on the table, so we pre-bend the reconstruction plate. So this is a reconstruction plate, uh, 2.0 uh, millimeter uh, locking uh, plate that um, we pre-bend it earlier with this STL model. So therefore, uh, surgery was planned for the marginal mandible. Uh, man, marginal mandibectomy uh, or marginal mandible resection from 3.1 to 4.8. So uh, we decided that um, approach for this would be uh, from the extra order approach. So we approach from the submandibular incision on the right side of this uh, uh, patient side. So um, uh, we start off with the incision of the skin, uh, followed by the incision towards the platysma muscle and uh, slightly go deeper. Then we Managed to preserve the uh, marginal uh, uh, margin of the mandibular nerve. Sorry, uh, the uh, yeah. Then um, we preserve also the uh, facial vein, followed by the uh, uh, facial artery and facial vein, and also we remove part of the uh, uh, limb nodes surrounding this part, this area. Okay, so coming to this. Um, highlight of the surgery. So before, prior to the surgery, there was a, a little discussion among surgeons in our place, whether we want to use a piezo surgery or piezotome, or probably by using a traditional method, by using the Lindemann burr, or probably by using a Fisher burr. Um, well, uh, it turns out that uh, we decided to use a piezotome uh, uh, instrument, and this is the uh, video for it. So. You can see uh, the cutting was made uh, along the uh, 3 1 area. Um, what I can find the advantage of this is uh, by using this pisotome is it has made a very uh, uh, precise cut and uh, uh, narrow, and obviously uh, the cut or osteotomy, osteotomy as planned from the STM model. So you can see the cut also uh, uh, will be able to control rather than by using a normal uh, Lindemann burr, which sometimes you might end up uh, uh, burring or, or remove a lot of uh, unwanted uh, bone area. So you can see exactly from this uh, video, a precise, really precise cut. And, and the most important thing is um, the preservation of a soft tissue, particularly on the lingual side. This is the important factor, which uh, from previous experience that we use, especially when we use Lindemann burr or Fisher burr, uh, during the cuts towards a lingual plate on the lingual side, we might accidentally uh, cut towards a myelohyoid or genohyoid or genoglossus uh, uh, muscle that leads into um, Massive uh, bleeding. So in this uh, 
uh, by using this pisotome, it creates a very uh, a smooth and, and 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 preservation towards the soft tissue. So therefore, the the, the bleeding, the chances of bleeding is lessened there. Apart from that, the effect of a cavitation also is important uh, uh, in, in this pisotome uh, uh, procedure. However, the issue that I find out by using this pisotome is uh, time consuming as most of the surgeon, I think uh, uh, among oral medical surgeon, they quite really uh, particular in terms of timing in surgery. For this uh, session, I clock almost about 48 minutes to complete the cut from a 3-1 up to 4-8 region. Whereas um, in a normal situation, by using uh, uh, traditional armamentarium, it takes about 20 minutes to complete the cuts. However, with the injury towards uh, uh, soft tissue on the lingual side. Okay. Apart from that, um, I also find out that um, uh, some area, particularly on the deeper section area, uh, we have a trouble in terms of uh, approaching that area, probably due to uh, not so long teeth that can be reachable towards a certain area. So I think if if we can uh, provide with a certain tips that probably slightly longer, then uh, it should be a perfect armamentarium for a uh, choose a uh, uh, choices armamentarium for oral maxillofacial surgeon. Okay, so uh, during the surgery. Uh, I decided to use this uh, piezo position uh, tip, uh, PZ1, and also the uh, bone surgery uh, tip um, uh, during uh, the surgery. Uh, the piezo position is mainly for cutting on the lower part of the inferior border of the mandible, which try to preserve the bridging gap uh, left about 5 mm, whereas the rest of the part, I continue with this um, uh, uh, bone uh, tip. So uh, you can see the results of this osteotomy cut. You can see a very nicely cut uh, 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 and preservation on the uh, lower border of the uh, mandible. And uh, also in the oral, you can see um, almost uh, very clear uh, cutting. Uh, in this case, uh, we uh, had to sacrifice the adena because the ID nerve uh, has been in, uh, involved with this solution. So then uh, we place the plate that has been uh, prevent uh, with the minor uh, adjustment. Uh, we save almost at least half an hour uh, from bending a plate intraoral. And lastly, after uh, placement of the uh, reconstruction plate, we place the uh, IMF screw uh, for a temporary denture retention because later on patient will require a denture. So this is a post-surgery. Um, uh, patient recovered quite well. Uh, at least uh, she, she stays in the ward for about four days uh, before being discharged. And this is a specimen. Uh, the specimen roughly about uh, five to, uh, six uh, centimeter. And was sent to all our oral pathologists and they came out with the result of the unicystic endoblastoma. So this is a ceramic radiograph of the patient. Uh, the one that you see like a screw on top of it is um, IMF screw as a retention for a denture by a prostrontis later on. So uh, just a comparison, this is a previous x-ray and we showed back with the uh, uh, the, the latest condition of this patient, which uh, there was an IMF screw on both sides. So, uh, coming to advantage of visotome, uh, as I mentioned just now, it is less bleeding, uh, which it preserves a uh, uh, soft tissue area. And also it has a precise cut, very fine and clean, and also in able to maintain the small bridging gap of the inferior border and preserve the remaining lower border mandible. And also no injuries to the lingual tissue, uh, preserve the uh, muscles over the uh, lingual side. Uh, due to that, we're able to do a good suturing, uh, a good closure, primary closure, uh, as uh, there was a, 
uh, remaining lingual tissue that is still intact. And also temperature control of water pressures of this area also uh, quite well because the water splash is continuously. So these are the reference uh, that I made from this uh, presentation. And this is the uh, time uh, during the, the case. Next to me is uh, Dr. Hasme uh, in this group also. So uh, for this case, so uh, with that, thank you.